Good afternoon, everyone. We still have a few people logging in, so we're going to give them a couple minutes and to get settled, and then we'll get underway. For now, please introduce yourself in the chat box with your name and organization. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Thank you for joining us today on today's webinar, Two Weeks Ready. Today's webinar is being presented by Oregon After School for Kids, AKA Oregon Ask. Before we get started, I wanted to address some housekeeping items. Today's webinar is being recorded. We will be able to share the recording with you once we've wrapped up the event and made it available on the Oregon Ask website. We've muted everyone, but want to encourage everyone to utilize the chat box for any questions or comments. So welcome. Thank you to everyone who was able to join us today. We're excited to have everyone online and to be presenting about this topic. The presenters today will include myself and Colleen, my colleague, Colleen Dorfler. My name is Cassie Russell. I'm the health and wellness coordinator, as well as a trainer at Oregon Ask. Emergency preparedness is a topic I've been fairly invested in, especially in the last two years. I was part of an early learning emergency preparedness and response planning work group in 2017 that we'll do a brief overview on later. I've been FEMA trained on community resilience, and I've created an emergency preparedness best practices for after school. So as Cassie said, my name is Colleen Dorfler. I am the Health and Wellness Vista at Oregon Ask, and I will be coordinating a lot of the work in regards to this project. We'll get more into it later, but I will be helping to administer monthly calls that will be available to you all going forward. And I will also be leading quarterly work group meetings for the Two Weeks Ready campaign, as well as traveling throughout the state of Oregon with Cassie to visit CCRNRs and to hold community conversations. And one other person who will be a key person coordinating this project with us who isn't on the webinar today, her name is Leilani Larson. She's our quality improvement specialist. She just recently joined Oregon Ask a couple months ago and we're really excited to have her. And so she'll be going around the state with us and helping us review some of the materials. 
I wanna briefly go over the items we'll be talking about today. I'll be giving some background information on who Organask is and what we do. We'll cover some key partners through this work. We'll review the goals we're aiming to accomplish through the Two Weeks Ready campaign. And we'll be reviewing a tentative timeline on how the campaign is scheduled to roll out. So with that, I will hand it off to Colleen. All right, so who is Oregon Ask and what do we do? Oregon Ask is part of three national organizations that work to uplift the after school field. We are one of the 50 state networks that focus on policy and research for the field. We are also one of 38 affiliates to the National After School Association, which covers quality professional development for after school staff. And finally, we serve as the Oregon Girls Collaborative working to provide more opportunities for young girls and underrepresented youth in STEM fields. In regards to our mission, on the state level, we act as the convener of expanded learning opportunities. We work with parks and recreation departments, after school programs, summer programs, community action groups, DHS, OD, as well as many other organizations. Many of the organizations we work with contribute to a huge amount of the work we do. All of the data collection for our reports has been aided by our stakeholders. This includes our Smart Summers report, our report on the Every Student Succeeds Act, and the Access and Equity report that we've been working on for the past couple of years. We plan on sending you all a follow-up email, which will include a link with virtual copies of these reports. One, one focus of ours at Oregon Ask is to support quality programs through partnerships, professional development, and policy. This here is a general overview of what we do as an organization statewide. We often contract with programs to provide coaching and consultation. We evaluate programs to ensure their quality. We develop and deliver trainings that are approved through the Oregon Registry under Portland State University and we provide resources and curriculum as well as serve as a connector for different organizations. So we just want you all to know we're here to help. We will be serving as the connector for you all through this project. A big part of our goal is to make sure communities get to know the right people, have access to necessary resources, and to make sure programs and providers have a voice about what's going on in their community within the emergency preparedness landscape. We want to help tell the story of what's actually happening on the ground so policymakers and other communities understand the real barriers and su successes of our partners. Thank you, Colleen. Diving into some key partners for this work, um, we'll be working with the Willamette Education Service District as well as the Office of Child Care. As some of you might know, the uh -huh. The Early Learning Division. On the bottom right hand side. Um, the Early Learning Division pulled together a work group that in 2017 on emergency preparedness for child care centers with the goal of making sure children who have specific and unique needs in facilities were able to be cared for during and after an emergency event. This is the work group that I referred to earlier on um, that I had been able to be a part of. And so with that in mind, the, the work that the group had a big emphasis on child and caregiver reunification following the events of an emergency, which we hope to continue and build upon. We're really excited for the opportunity to work with the CCRNRs on this campaign as important as this one. As the CCRNRs, you all have a close connection to the providers you work with and an understanding of the different barriers they face on a day-to-day -day basis. You are all a big component of this campaign and we want to make sure to provide plenty of opportunities for everyone to have a voice in this project. Another organization we've been working closely with is the Research Institute who have developed a training of trainers on emergency preparedness based off of the child care aware curriculum recently developed specifically for Oregon. <clears throat> TRI's training of trainers covers the emergency preparedness recovery and response cycle, which include mitigation, prepared, response, and recovery. The training goes into various aspects of what being prepared can look like, providing plenty of scenarios for participants to think through. Additionally, the training manual utilized in the training also delves into responding to disasters, 
recovery, which includes reunification, needs assessment, and goes into mental and emotional needs. This two-week ready campaign will be supplementing that training with principal resources and templates, as well as connecting CCRNRs to community resources like the community emergency response teams and other community partners that are part of this. TRI and Oregon Ask will be supporting each other's efforts as both organizations want to have a shared message to dispel any confusion in relation to being prepared for a natural or man-made disaster. So you guys might be thinking, why two weeks ready? This campaign of being two weeks ready originated from the Oregon Office of Emergency Management a couple of years ago after analyzing the last 10 years in what the next 10 years to 20 years could look like with the rising threat of the Cascadia subduction zone. For those who don't know, the Cascadia subduction zone runs from the coast of Vancouver, Canada, all the way down to Northern California. This subduction zone is supposed to set off a 9.0 magnitude earthquake. In comparison, take the earthquake that occurred in Haiti in 2010. The United Nations estimated that 80,000 buildings were destroyed and over 300,000 people died in that earthquake. It was categorized with a magnitude of 7.0. The Office of Emergency Management created a breakdown of what to expect when the Cascadia earthquake occurs. From what they have found when looking at the past 10 years, 72 hours preparedness is no longer adequate in the case of emergencies. After disastrous events like Hurricane Maria and the wildfires in California, these events have left communities on their own for weeks to months at a time. The overall goal from the end of this campaign is that CCRNRs and providers are two weeks ready. This lofty goal includes instilling community resilience during and after emergencies. A big component is, of this is getting to know your neighbor, so to speak. When a disaster like a hurricane occurs, emergency services might not be able to get to communities for weeks or even months, like Colleen had just mentioned. A point FEMA really tries to push is that communities need to be able to leverage what exists in their already in their communities because no one is going to be able to save you right away. A great example of a way to leverage community resources is Oak Ridge School and Disaster Meals. Last year when we had that snowstorm that closed down parts of the highway and caused many kids to be stuck on buses for hours and had people abandoning their cars, USDA nutrition programs were able to set up emergency meal sites at existing sponsors of child nutrition programs. Oak, Oak Ridge School was a sponsor of child nutrition programs, were able to serve food and get reimbursed for the foods they gave out. They had figured out a way to use local trucking companies to access USDA foods and commodity items in local storehouses. Now, any sponsor of a child nutrition program, including child care centers, are able to provide free meals in times of emergencies, such as a snowstorm. The storm was a stressful event for many parents and kids that didn't have the food or water supplies to get them through the storm. Because child nutrition programs stepped in and provided meals at no cost to children during the emergency at sponsor sites, parents were able to prioritize other stressors in face of this. So like I said, the purpose behind this campaign is to raise awareness to the very real emergencies that can happen in every community across Oregon. We understand that two weeks is a lot to ask of providers. It's more of a long-term goal for providers to start working on and reach two weeks with resources like TRI's training and resources that we'll be providing throughout the campaign. The more, we believe the more aware you are, the more prepared you'll be. Sorry about that, folks. I want to touch on a topic on how childcare is an essential function for normal day-to-day -day operations. And I feel like it's something that doesn't always get said out loud, but it's something that's very true. This essential function becomes so much more pertinent when an emergency takes place, specifically when it comes to first responders having children. Having a safe place for your child to be is so incredibly important for anyone who has a child. Having no childcare in a community is an emergency in and of itself. If people don't have anywhere safe for their children to be, then businesses lose productivity from worried parents and absent parents who are trying to care for their children. To add to this point, 
The Child Care Development Fund serves 1.4 million children each month on a national level with the goal that children are safe. This goal becomes especially important in the event of a major disaster, as children have unique needs in emergency situations are and are among our most vulnerable populations. Maintaining the safety of children in child care programs necessitates planning in advance on child care providers. With this information in mind, Acknowledging the important role providers play in emergency management is critical, hence why CCRNRs are at the center of this campaign. So in regard to how this is all going to play, play out time-wise, so starting on November 15th, we will be having our first quarterly workgroup meeting. We will be following up and sending out a Zoom link so you all have access to this. In addition to that, we will also start visiting CCRNR sites beginning in November. At these visits, we will be verbalizing information about the Two Weeks Ready campaign and having community conversations about the emergency preparedness process. We will be dividing up our visits over a span of two years. In our first year, we will be conducting these visits from November until May. In year two of this campaign, we plan to visit the rest of the CCRNRs. In terms of when we plan to visit each CC, each CCRNR site, we will be going in areas where we can access at certain times throughout the year, as well as reaching out individually to schedule times that would work best for each of you. Cassie and I will also be hosting monthly statewide calls accessible to each of you. These calls are meant to keep everyone updated on the process of the campaign, as well as to answer any questions that may arise. These calls are not required. They are more of an opportunity for everyone to come to us directly if you feel it would be helpful. We will be sending out an email with the dates of these calls as well. At the end of the two years, we will be writing up a report available to the public and to policymakers in hopes of increasing awareness around our two weeks ready campaign. This report will be similar to our smart summers and ESSA reports, which again will be sent out to you via email. Thank you, Colleen. So with that, does anyone have any questions? Again, feel free to use the chat box since you are all currently muted. All right. Well, with that, I want to thank everyone again for joining the webinar today. Colleen and I will be sending up a follow-up email later this week. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send either one of us an email. And we hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.